Hi, my name's Rowan Simpson. On behalf of the Heritage Committee, uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce you to Graham Watt, a legend of the club. Uh, Graham is not only a life member, he is an international race officer, yep. um, a champion yachtsman in your own right. Oh, as I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I think so, and, as, and also um, a committee member of past, right? I think you got to uh, Vice Commodore, is that right? We'll discuss uh, that later. Rear, rear, rear Commodore. Rear Commodore, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, let's start talking about your sailing first because that's nearest to my heart, yeah. okay? Um, interesting, I've, I've got the book here under full sail, which you were a part of, um, of preparing, and that book told me that you had a boat that you had to sail for an engagement ring. Yeah, well, going back a bit before, when I, when I joined the club, I was... Uh, in the Sea Scouts of Brighton. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> we had we used to row down to the old sub here and climb and that was a big day out. One day we were gonna go sailing. Anyway, I didn't get a go at the sailing, I was a bit annoyed, so I sort of like to get into that and I um, put my name down and joined Brighton. Right. Well, Brighton, a school friend of mine was part of the Commodore. Not Margot. No, no, no. no not Margot, okay. <laughs> fellow Tom Hall was a Commodore at the time, Bruce okay. was his son. And um, we and had a 12 month wait. And in the meantime, I was working pumping petrol up in Sandingham in Hampton. And um, a guy came in once and said, oh, the Sandy Club's just been, your club's been burnt down. Right. Anyway, I'd saved up enough money then to buy a VJ. Mm -hmm. And we pushed it on a trolley from Brighton down here. And when I got back home that night, there was a letter saying, come to Brighton. Well, of course, I didn't. I stayed here, and it's uh, probably the best part of it. A bit like Louis, you know, he was a member of Brighton, and we seconded him here to yeah. Sandringham. So yeah, I never yeah. actually got it. We became a member of Brighton, yeah. but anyway, so I joined the club in '54, and uh, been a member ever since, and sailed pretty every season. '54, and okay, um, you started then in the off the beach section. Is that right? Yeah, in yeah. 1954. Well, it wasn't really anything there then. We just had the fire. Right. And there was a fibro office at the front gate, and that was it. And uh, when I joined the club, it was a dollar fifty was the first year subs and the joining fee. And Ad McKenzie and um, Frank Rice Smith were in the office, and we just went in there before we went sailing, and that's how we paid you dollar fifty. Yeah, wonderful. Joined the club. Yeah. Okay. But uh... then the sail lockers were built down that side after a while, then what became the Off the Beach Centre was built for the Olympics in 56. Right. In 56, didn't, didn't, didn't you meet Margot about that same time? Um, probably, time. she says around then, because uh, probably could have been. <laughs> yeah. So I'm getting to that bloody generous offer of you to sell your boat, the first keel boat you ever had, right? Yeah. To buy the engagement ring. I didn't have any other money then, <laughs> and the keel boat kept you pretty poor. Yeah, <laughs> right, okay. But, uh, yeah, so all that went to Sydney. I spent a day, um, there was an old wood cradle here, which a dragon had arrived on, so I managed to cut that to fit Janester, and then uh, when we laid on the scatter Sydney, put it on that, because I couldn't send in the club cradle. Right. At the time, yeah, so that went up there. And okay. Then, um, so that led, led to a long series of um, crewing, I understand why, <laughs> <laughs> with the <laughs> imminent marriage. Um, so crewing. At, I was very surprised because when I was a young kid, I used to walk along the wharf and this new Vanderstadt fiberglass boat arrived called Astolot. Astolot, right? Yeah. I used to call it Costolot because it looked, Costolot, looked very, yeah, yeah, exactly. you know. it looked very expensive, this boat. Anyway, um, you ended up crewing on that and did your yeah. first Sydney to Hobart on Astolot with right. Billy yeah. Crofts? Yeah. yeah, actually, after it sold, Janesta, Charlie Herod got myself and a few of the crew, and we helped finish building Altair in his backyard. Oh, yeah. Altair came before us a lot then, did yeah, it? Yeah. OK, yeah. And we did a couple of Devonports, so I only got there once on that. OK. And then Bill Croft asked me to... Yeah, I think we've got a little snapshot of um, Altair for yeah. you to yeah. everybody to see, yeah, so... Yeah, we got there, yeah. yeah. But um, that was the first year I was married, and Margot said, I suppose you want to do a Hobart once, and I said, the trouble with that is people want you to have already done one before they take you anyway, Crofty... Um, asked me to go, and uh, the first Christmas was in Sydney. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, I know that routine. Yeah. Christmas Day, have a quick lunch, off to the airport. Well, that year, Not very actually, popular. we were already in Sydney, 
so I wasn't home at all Christmas Day. OK. But oh. we ran into Lou. Lou had his boat moored at... Um, big power boat moored at yeah. um, Rowings Rose Bay, so we stopped there for a, a drink while we were sailing around the harbour on Christmas uh, Day. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. So how did you go on that slide? Well, to first out the head must have been memorable. It was, yeah. She was a fast boat and wide air. Yeah. Man, it's that interesting designer because... Um, at that time, we had Red Sioux, Canopus, yeah. those type of boats. Yeah, and LT was designed yeah. by him too, the bomb was And they were all ahead of their times, I think, because they had fin keels. Not enough sail area in those times, but um, I think Vandersat was well ahead of his time. Yeah, you know, I met him in Hobart. He was down there one year. The only thing I had to talk to about his series and that, he designed Serena for Jefferson Jones. Yeah, and another and beautiful he was, boat. He was yeah. out there when, uh, at the end of that Hobart. Mm. Okay. So speaking of Hobarts, Hobarts, how many Hobart races did you eventually do before you got wise? I got wise too, by the way. Yeah, 15. <laughs> 15? Oh, well, I beat you with that, but uh, 15 Hobarts, yeah. Um, that's an admirable achievement. Um, yeah. And your most favourite Hobart, or none of them are really oh, favourites, unless you win? I suppose, yeah, the year on challenge, we got a third. We sat there and watched the time run out. We could see the finishing line. Right, OK. And then the, I think it was the next year that Lou won it in challenge. Yeah. Or yeah. challenge one or two, call it what you like. Mm. Yeah, well, it's quite interesting because um, I used to... Now, with this interview, there's Astolot and then there's Banshee. Banshee, a little half-tonner. Yeah, there little... was a bit... After Astolot, I'd sail, help Bill finish Jasuma, yeah. got his factory, and we did a Devonport, wasn't ready for the Hobart, and then we did, did a couple of Hobarts on that. Then one on bid, Jim Vickery's. Right. I was flying in '36. Then I started sailing with Lou on uh, Victoria. Victoria, yeah. And then later we built Challenge up at the factory. Yeah. Well, that would have been exciting to see that boat evolve from yeah, nothing into yeah. Yeah. Well, Lou was the um, team manager for the Admirals Cup that year, and yeah. there they had the, the big blow and they were losing rudders, and he kept sending me factors to make the um, the rudder stronger, stop bigger. stronger, that, stronger. Yeah. Yeah, and I okay. said to the guys building it, if you have it ready to turn over by the time Lou gets back, we'll put on a barrel of a beer. So we, we split them up. So they were bending prone 24 hours a day and just standing them up 12 hours. And okay. I got it well, going back to that Banshee thing, you're, after doing the Devonport, you went for a little cruise and that used to be called the Booze oh, the boo Well, no, they were actually more on a bus. We, um, <laughs> hang four... on, hang on, that's not what the book says. <laughs> <laughs> we did four... Devon Port's in it. One time the wives flew over and two kids we weren't expecting and we had a bus and a driver. So we left the boat in uh, Devon Port, I think it was, yes, and we drove around. Tassie had New Year's Eve in Strawn and, and went to lots of places. And As you do with young families, I remember doing that after yeah, Hobart. When my kids, <laughs> we um, originally were looking for a drive yourself one bus and just before Christmas, they said, we don't have those in Tasmania. OK. So they had over the get, driver. Had yeah. to get one on the driver, which worked out quite well. Another thing I admire about you, uh, Graham, is your selection of boats. OK. Mm. Now, Banshee, a half-tonner, um, probably wasn't the most successful boat, but after that, you had Revolution and, of course, Watermark 2. Yeah. Watermark 2. Yeah. Watermark 2 still going strong. And you were actually a living legend. You couldn't be beaten in Watermark. Is that right? You had a very good crew. I wouldn't and say that. We were, we were lucky Mike Manson sold um, Young Lion because he was hard to beat. <laughs> oh, OK. <laughs> that made it a bit easier for us. But uh, no, they're great boats. Banshee was a good boat and it was fine. Yeah. It was the original one that was built in glass. And then the next one was Province, which Tommy Stevenson yep, had, which right. won the... Uh, yeah. The local... Um, Australian Championships, yeah. Yeah, and then he went over to Chicago and won the Worlds. Yep, that's right. Quite a mm. famous occasion. But yeah. um, So there. So which boat was your most favourite boat? Well, it's between Banshee and Watermark. Watermark we had, it was a great boat to sail, but we um, just kept it in the bay where we could go offshore in, the, in the Banshee. Yeah, OK. It might have been a bit wet. It was a flush decker, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. All right, well, moving on then to your race management. Um, yeah. You're an absolute legend with uh, your race management. I reckon you've been doing it probably 40 years. No, not, not as long oh. as that. It was when I was club captain, so I sort of, you know, they put something back into the sport. And Rex Newman was the yeah. um, club captain then, or a race officer then. And one of the Osaka races, I think it might have been... No, the Admiral's Cup trials. 
he said, I won't be here tomorrow, you're in charge. OK. So I was left with that and that sort of got me pushed into it a bit and then I um, you know, went a bit further and the Wilsons were pushing people. And they were great. Well, they weren't the around that time, surely. <laughs> yes, yeah. they were. And um, they qualified for international for the 99 Worlds here. Right. And I had that and then... Um, <clears throat> No, uh, and that sort of just pushed me along. And one of the big highlights, I suppose, was the Olympics. Right. And Sydney, a volunteer up there on the race course, and it was just fantastic regatta. Right. Mm. Okay. Um, I think race officers have to maintain a logbook. You must have volumes of it. Volumes. No, I've got, so. got a logbook. I didn't bring it down. <laughs> so, what what do you reckon of your race officer experience? It were memorable. OK, you mentioned the Sydney one, um, and that was because it's home and, a, and an Olympics and just, must be wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And the equipment they had and all the facilities, it was just in the uh, comradeship of everybody there. Even the guys would come and clean the marinas after each race, you know, and inflating the marinas. And it was supposed to be a dry regatta you need to pass to get into the site. And um, but when we came in, there was a barrel load of beer for every course. Really? <laughs> okay. More than you could drink. So. so we could learn a little bit from that. No, no the <laughs> club here is very good with its race officer. We must admit that. But um... yeah, well, this was after the regatta, and actually, that was one of my low points in it when um, I was trying to take beer off the committee boat and give it to them afterwards, and there was a bit of a delegation against me for that. Oh dear. Okay. Uh, but um, what about um, local championships on the bay here? If well, you've the done... 99 Worlds were great. Yeah. We had the Finn Gold Cup. Yep, yep. And um, we've had um, a lot of world championships here. Mm -hmm. Flying Dutchman's, J24s. And they also helped at Brighton with the Dragon Worlds and the Etchell Worlds. And they were fantastic regattas. Mm. I know for a fact that when, say, we're hosting the Association Cup, oh, is Graham available? It's <laughs> a non-event non for anyone else. But uh, so there it goes to show your reputation goes before you then. Mm. So... Um, what do you think of the current training thing? I'm a bit pissed off about it, actually, that I've got to go into a course to mm. get accredited. Um, do you think that's a good idea or not? Well, I'm not quite sure where Australian sailing are going with all that. I mean, we want to encourage people to get into the system and encourage them to get through it as far as they want to go. And I know one of our local race officers, he had to reapply and I had to go through the whole thing with him. We got it. Mm. But to me, it just seemed to be an overkill for the, one of the more basic levels. I think it's something we've got to get used to, but um, I'm yeah. just going, I'm a volunteer. I don't have to do this bloody weekend course. But anyway, That's I've it. signed up for the 18th, the 17th and 18th of June, so there you go. Yeah, anyway. oh, good. it's good to keep people in it. And uh, sure. we need to, you know, um, everybody's getting older and they drop out and yeah, the new one's coming along. And we're... In actual fact, that is a problem. I might do a bit of a plug for race officers here because um, I think the race officers at the club, we're all getting older. Now, um, I consider, We've been talking about the practicalities of your membership here, on the water, organising races, all that sort of stuff. Now, there was a time that you were involved in the committee, uh, and as you say, you got to uh, vice commodore, was it? Vice uh, I was rear re re commodore. Re okay. It was when we were trying to get Graham mainly into the uh, flags there because of his knowledge of engineering when the marinas were being built. And Les Black rang me up out of the blue and we said, we need someone to fill in for a year so we can get GA up there. Will you do it? So, so I said, yes. And at the so end of the year, he said, will you stay for another one? And I said, no, the option was to get GA there. I wondered about that because I wanted no uh, ambition to become Commodore. <laughs> well, I, I think it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. And I didn't think I had that available to do it properly at the time. Right. So that's why I just... OK. So that, that led to On the Water. And I noticed in your resume in the, um, uh, the, the book, it said um, giving back to the club. And I think you've certainly done that through your race officer's um, leadership. Uh, as I said, I asked you the question there because who else to ask? Um, so I think uh, you've given back a lot more than what uh, you've taken from the club. So. Well, we've had a lot of good times here. So uh, part of the deal, isn't it? Yeah. A lot of people do a lot more to you see around. Some have been on um, you know, treasures sure. for years and sure. they move on yeah. like... Uh, Phil Byrne, the number of years he put in. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So talking about those people, you've been here such a long time. Personalities that stand out, um, uh, can you remember any? Going oh, back to well, the... the ones that stands out a lot was you and I know very well was Lou. Yeah. He was uh, much loved by everybody and a great uh, sailor. Yeah. 
Yeah. One great person to work with. Yeah, that's right. We've got a lot, of common, lot in common with that because yeah. um, you used to work with Lou and uh, helped me out occasionally when I had to work, uh, chase up a few things, so mm. appreciate that. So um, in finishing up, uh, let me say thank you so much to Graham on behalf of the full membership, not only for the interview here, but for your time uh, doing all those volunteer jobs. Um, you, eventually, you'll leave a large gap in the organisation. So thanks a lot. Well, thank you very much for all the effort you put in to put this together. No, no worries, and, uh, well okay. done. Thank you. Thank you.